on this up here. And before we get started with today's assignment, which I imagine to be a one off, we'll probably finish it today. You can use acrylic or oil, but I will be demonstrating an oil. I just wanted to share that I, uh, in my morning meditation, I was feeling a little bit like, I don't want to say discouraged, but kind of blah. Now, there's a lot of reasons, right, where we could all be feeling blah right now. <laughs> it's kind of a blah time. And for many reasons, I'm not going to get into it. All of you know what I'm talking about. Um, and, uh, and I felt like everything I did was not enough. And here I am working and working. And, uh, you know, there's never enough money in my bank account and yada, 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 yada. Here, every, on and on and on. And, um, and I, I do a little ritual where I burn an herb lavender in my studio and I ask for a certain blessing to come upon the studio and those, all those who interact with it. And then after that, I got this message saying, ah, such a human thing to be all worried about what you're not doing or not doing enough. She, the, the voice said, in fact, it felt very specific to somebody I knew, a creator I knew recently who died a couple years ago, a friend of mine. She said to me, all you have to do is four things. You need to create, you need to inspire, you need to support, and you need to laugh. So I want us to like take that on today as we draw and create um, this crystal. <laughs> I think will be really fun. And that made me feel a lot better. Um, we're going to start, of course, with the drawing. So let me, I'm going to send, we're not going to grid this, okay, but I want to review a couple of things before we get into the painting. And unfortunately, I couldn't, um, oh, you know what, I think actually we're going to do this. So before you draw the red inner lines, oops, very hard when you're working through a camera. Okay. Um, so before we get much into the detail, I did not manage to get a copy of the color copy of this. So you guys will all see the color copy of the photograph that we're working from and the WhatsApp thread. Um, you'll need to follow from that. Uh, if you're following the video, I'll have the video editor make sure to insert this in a few places. Um, one or two questions as we get started in the drawing using a pencil. The first question is, um, where's the light coming from? Anybody have a guess? Where's the light? Underneath. Nope. Almost. It's very hard to tell. It is hard to tell. Maybe in color it's easier. Definitely hard to tell. Uh, however, it looks from the upper. It looks from the upper left. Uh, it's really uh, right up and down. If you yeah. look the shadow you'll see the yeah, shadow. i am looking at that yeah that's why i said that was coming down i don't really think it's coming from the left i actually think yeah maybe up, up. it's kind of coming up and yeah. when you see and the reason this is important is you can see the parts the lightest parts of this crystal are those that are facing up and catching the light so this is light this is light, that's light. Over here, it's light. These are all like lighter. And when you look at, even looking at it in the, here it's lighter, right? So as we start to go through this and sketch this out, um, keep that in mind, where are the lights in this drawing? So you'll see, I've started pretty simply. Whoops, there we go. So my camera is like wiggling, so it's not on there. Come on. I think when it stops moving, it'll focus again. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh -uh. 
So as we start to come in and sketch, we're starting very simply. And I am coming in like this. Like so before. And I don't care which side you do this. You can do this whatever size you want. Right, so I start with this outer shape that's kind of simple. I come in with this. Um, the shape that helps me get the cubes. So, and there's two things I want you to, I want you not to do. Number one, you do not have to draw every single change of this, right? Don't get overwhelmed by the changes. However, I also don't want to see this. I don't want to see everything look like it's in a pattern, right? That's also not what's happening here. So I don't want you to make up a pattern that doesn't exist. I want you to look at the patterns that are here. And I want you particularly to pay attention to the shapes, the biggest shapes, right? And where there's a transition from light to dark, that's where we're really paying attention. You'll want all the lights light shapes spelled out. Sorry, I know I, if I'm going to draw this, maybe I'm going to move this over. I mean, right now this thing is right in front of me. I can't even see it. So here, I'm going to draw this here like this. You can watch me do it. So you see, I'm like drawing this transition between here and here. And then there's kind of a dark area, the darkest area is kind of in here. So where I'm paying the most attention, right, is where these transitions are from, and of course, there's this, right, and here. That's fairly dark. But when I'm looking at transitions, I'm kind of paying attention to the way light meets the medium, meets the dark, and it comes back up and meets the light. So when I start to sketch out, I'm not getting into a super amount of detail. Focus on these blue lines. But I am focusing on the detail where there's a transition. And I'm trying to get the edges right. Oh! You know what I thought when I saw this one, Sandra? It looked like Watership Down to me. It looked like one of the rabbits in Watership Down. Um, I think she liked it because uh, your background and your sky are filled in because your bunny um, lines are very strong, right? Your contour lines around the edge of the bunny are really strong. So it helps delineate, push it forward. So I think you did a really good job with the grass and the sky on that one. And also that edge totally makes it professional looking too, doesn't it? I can see it. I can see it. Did you sell it, Sandra? She sorry, it, sorry, I was on mute. I can see that. I think it's the full background and the, the edges oh. that are not decalled. Yeah, but, but the but the mastery, but you got a handle on what each of those areas is supposed to be doing, right? It's soft in the background, and it's right. harsher, and your lines are very strong on your subject. So your subject springs forward and your background kind of cushions in the back, but also pushes the other direction. It's did, very you, did you sell it, Sandra? Yes. In fact, uh, the woman who, she's a colleague, she was interested in my latest rabbit, you know, the one with a deck yeah. of that. Yeah. And then she changed her mind and then she came to look at all my rabbits and she bought this one saying she wanted something more sophisticated. So. She thought, so that's why I was asking you why she thought it was more sophisticated. And I think it is maybe the style of painting, the full background and the, the edges. Maybe oh. decalled edges are not so good. 
So, so which rabbit was it she bought? The one I put in the thread. Oh, you put it on the thread. Okay. It's wonderful, Sandra, and congratulations. I think that's awesome. Well, it's amazing because this, everybody liked that rabbit so much, the latest one, that I also got a commission for a pet rabbit, a secret commission. <laughs> I love it. Did you say a secret commission? I mean, it's, yeah, I, I can't, it's for his wife, and I, so I can't say anything on Facebook or anything like that. Right. Ah. It's a surprise for his wife. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And you guys will notice here back in the drawing, right, that I really focused on this line first because I'm distinguishing between kind of the light and the medium dark area. Now I'm going to come in here. So this is how not to get overwhelmed. Right, so here's the lighter area. Oh, right, and then there's this super dark area. In here and up here. But here's like dark area, here's a lighter area, here's the medium, here's the transition over to dark. And then we've got these kind of big pieces up here where we wanna pay a little bit more attention to the planes. So instead of drawing all the planes, right, I'm more interested in just a few. I don't know why. Where is this? There we go. Yeah. So now I'm coming into these ones on the top. So I'm not feeling overwhelmed. I'm just feeling like, oh, I have a set of things I want to get to. You can see. Maybe make things a little too big. What is nice about this and what's going to be kind of fun, I think, is um, uh, playing with the different uh, plane changes because they're pretty distinct. Anyway, everybody busy creating, laughing. Want me to tell you a joke? I know a great joke. Okay. Right. I also want to know about Diana's mom. Oh, yeah. How's your mom doing, Diana? She's much better. She's home from the health hospital with like right. alien drugs, but she's home. Good. She had a heart attack, apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's very dangerous for women. Is it? Well, for men too. It's no, very dangerous. Women tend not to women tend to not develop the I have a, I have a classic symptoms. Yes, yeah. you're right. Well, it's not even just the symptoms, it's the it's the men with heart history of heart disease often start developing new arteries like in, when they're 18 or 19. And for women when a heart attack hits, they don't have those. We don't tend to have those developed. So you want you what did you say, Leah? It's like you can actually develop, you know, sometimes the arteries clog and new arteries will form uh, around so that they can kind of bypass the clogged ones. So Even when you're have, old? What? Even when you're old? Well, I mean, like, what I'm saying <laughs> is men tend to develop them early. Like, so men who have like a history of heart disease in their family, maybe their, their arteries start clogging when they're 18 and their body responds by developing new arteries. I thought so, arteries clog more like when you're 50, 60. It's true, but they can often start early for, for men, but not for women. So men often have are more likely to have different arterial systems. So when a heart attack hits, everything doesn't shut down. But women, that doesn't happen. 
So when women's arteries start to clog in their 50s and they have an attack, there's no alternative pathway. So that's why they tend to be more frail. Anyway, now we can say that, right, Diana? Because your mom's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you know this? Um, I don't know how I know that. I used to be a health reporter. And I remember doing a whole series on heart attacks in women. I don't know. It's amazing that I can remember that and like not what I have for breakfast this morning. <laughs> I wrote it like, I don't know, 10 years ago. That's called dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Early dementia. It was I thought it was called menopause. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mixed trip. It's just your brain is full of important things, so it really doesn't care what you had for breakfast. This is it? Like, is it important? Yeah, I don't know, though. I wonder about that. Like, <laughs> my, what my brain sort of evaluates is important. <laughs> it makes me wonder sometimes. So you can Yes, because things from when you were 20 that you remember, you think, why that? What, that's I, a stupid I, little thing that meant nothing at all. But it must have meant something. Well, and I mean, it's not stupid to say, for example, that I know this information about women and heart attacks and men and heart attacks. I do know it, but I'm like, why am I remembering that and not like, I don't know, something else. I also had a friend who had a heart attack in her 50s and had a pacemaker put in and um, she actually coded for like a minute and so we did both did a bunch of research on that idea, right? Like as, so as you can see, I'm getting some of this stuff. I'm kind of leaving the lighter area a little bit less developed. I'm really focusing on these edges toward the top where I can really extremely see all the shapes. And I guess that these little shapes are just like, Lights. So oh, what about a joke? You promised us a joke. Oh, a joke. All right. Worst joke <laughs> in history. She forgot. <laughs> Worst joke in history. Are you ready? It's a really yes. bad joke, but it's my favorite. <laughs> um, so a guy walks into a bar and he has a, a little newt on his shoulder, you know, like a little lizard yep. on his shoulder. And the bartender says, hey, buddy, what's that on your shoulder? The guy says that, oh, that's my, my pet newt. And the bartender says, he's cute. What do you call him? The guy says, I call him tiny. The bartender says, why do you call him tiny? The guy like sort of gestures his hand at his shoulder and says, because he's my newt. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, there's like a shocked silence, and then people look at me like that is the worst thing I have ever. No, it's not. <laughs> was true. He's my new. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have to get into as much detail as I did here. I think really it's more important at the top. I'll send a picture over. It's really kind of key, and I'm gonna actually redraw them in a different color so you can see the most important lines are really here and in here as we kind of distinguish the difference between light medium dark and then this kind of top layer don't get too overwhelmed with having to draw every one the, the viewer is going to be paying more attention to, oops, boy, it's been just a great, people have been doing great work in class, I gotta say. I've had all this really wonderful work all week in abstract art. Here's my drawing, but don't get too overwhelmed by my drawing. Oops. And then when you're ready to start painting, send your drawings in when you get when you get to them. I probably did way too much detail here. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> 
probably too much. So don't get overwhelmed by my drawing. Um, trying to think of what else is funny. Oh, somebody else, my the woman who runs my post office service where I get my mail delivered mm -hmm. uh, down the street. I saw her the other day and she was like, I'm like, how are you, how are you doing, Michelle? She's like, oh, I'm just feeling really bad. And I said, gee, I wonder why that is. And we both started laughing. And then I said, is it because you're, <laughs> because we're probably completely destroying the earth for our grandchildren? And she started laughing and she said, grandchildren, I, none of my three kids is having grandchildren. And I said, so see, now it's good news. <laughs> she started laughing. She was like, get out of here, Leah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop talking me out of being sad about not having grandchildren. <laughs> so Leah, what about that story about a rabbit you were gonna not tell oh, yesterday? I'm gonna tell you the story. Um, yes. So the kid so my favorite one of my favorite books as a child was written in 1939 it was a book called the country bunny and the little golden slippers and um it was about a little brown single mother rabbit who had like i don't know 20 children um who really wanted to be an easter bunny and uh but she couldn't you know because she was a mother of like all these children and uh, and then the easter bunny who was this tall elderly gentleman rabbit broke his leg and so he said would you, you're gonna need to go in my stead little brown rabbit so he gave her these famous golden slippers and she went off to deliver easter eggs to all the children but before she did it she knew she had to organize her own children to get all the work done in the house so she assigned tasks to all of them. And some of them were like cooking dinner and others were sweeping and others were making the beds. And one of the jobs was to make paintings for the walls of the house. <laughs> that's one of the jobs. And I was like, that's a job? <laughs> you can do that instead of like sweeping the floor or making the bed. <laughs> That's because being a rabbit, she had many children. That's a, yeah, and they all, of course, she was a great mother, and so they all were trained. So yes, yeah, like, that's a job. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's your job. And now it's my job. I just remember thinking at the time, that is amazing. I didn't even know that was a job. I want to do this when I grow up. <laughs> Right? It's called, it's really considered, this book has never gone out of print. You can still get it. It's called The Country Bunny and the Golden Slippers. And it is a fantastic, but like it's a kind of a, now they're kind of, it's a kind of a anti-racist book and a feminist book. And they, I mean, that's what they say, but really it's just about you know, going for your dreams or something, right? Like what that means, what that looks like. You can be a mother and still, you know, <laughs> but I was just like, whoa, it's a job to make paintings for this wall. <laughs> of course, because the author was probably the illustrator too, she understood that. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to like get that across to people. I can tell you a funny story about my mother. Please. Okay. As who is being, being last night was released from hospital and uh, she's just had a heart attack. So they called for a taxi for her. And she said, she asked, so is this taxi paid for? And they said, no, it's going to cost you $8 to go to your house. Or actually like less seven dollars and then okay. says, well then i'm not having it i'm taking the bus <laughs> <laughs> and she did and so she when i called the hospital to see how she was doing they said well we sent her home but she's going on the bus so it might take a while <laughs> <laughs> mothers what can you do yeah, so funny. All right, 
because this is a purple painting, my suggestion, mostly purple painting, is that we once again start with the basic um, underpainting uh, using burnt sienna. I know you're shocked, all of you, don't be surprised. I know it's a big surprise that I'm suggesting that we start this painting with burnt sienna. Try to contain your surprise. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I left my burnt sienna on my other table. Hold on, hold on. So I'm not in a rush, but when you're there, I'm not in a rush for you to get there, but when you're there, there's a little bit of burnt sienna and then I'm going to take a little gamsol or turpentine. For those of you using acrylic, you'll be using water, of course. Pouring it in here so you can see it's kind of sloshing around in there. And then let's try using, I'm going to use a thick brush. So I'm getting a lot of uh, turpentine or gamsol on my brush. And then I'm using, getting a very thin layer, kind of darkish. Honestly, you guys, this is kind of the easy part. So I'm just getting it done so you can see it, but I'm not rushing you in any way to get there. Uh, and then go in kind of more dark, so more paint. You don't have to get sort of all the details. Really, you just need to get kind of the light, dark transitions in place. And then more Gamsol, less paint. Right, so you can see here, it's still painty, but it's kind of light here and kind of a more medium here. I'll probably get a little bit darker in here. Remember, unlike watercolor, we can go as dark as we want. So this is kind of medium. Do you see I'm not doing this very distinctly? I'm letting my brush kind of run in between layers. It's really just highlighting the medium. And then I'm going to do a very light wash around the side. I guess I could get a little bit darker here in the shadow. Boy, it is so nice to have the sloppiness of um, oil and acrylic uh, accessible to us <laughs> after doing so much work with gra gouache and uh, <laughs> watercolor we have to be so careful with everything you're doing right we can just totally blend this around i do want the light dark kind of medium divide but that's all i'm really but see i don't care if there's drips coming through I don't care if we get too dark on the top because we can put our light sand on top. But what it, you do want to do if you're using oil is you do want the paint to be very thin and very turfed up because it will actually dry in about half an hour, which will be nice as we start to layer on. And I actually kind of like these little drips that I've got going on. Mine is dripping more because my, um, obviously my canvas is kind of facing up, right? Because it's on a drawing board that's kind of tilted. But really, this is it. And then you can just let the drips do what they may. It's pretty loose. Take a picture. And, but I'm not in a rush for you to get here. So I want you to really enjoy the process of in looking at these shapes, trying to get the main ones you know, that are going to help convey this feeling of this crystal, this particular crystal. Oops, there's my what's up. Good drawing, by the way, Pat. I like that drawing. It's good. Thank you. Like your drawing has improved so much. Thanks to you. Yeah, thanks to you. You're practicing. 
I can tell you just because I tell somebody to do something doesn't mean they're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> so really, it's all the thanks is much of the thanks goes to you for persevering and pushing. Right now, I think this looks a little bit like a baked potato. <laughs> like with, I don't know, bacon and things on the top of it. Um, the other thing I thought we might do today, you guys, is we might use our palette knives. So if you happen to have one of these, don't worry, if you don't, it's not a big deal. But if you have one of these, which we often use for mixing, we might try just applying some paint. What are you working on today, uh, Sandra? And what are you working on, Diana? Your mom's I'm portrait? I'm trying to finish my portrait that fittingly is on my mother. Right. And I'm sending it over right now. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm doing that, uh, that rabbit commission, which Not in okay. watercolor, which I'm a little bit worried about because it's the kind of picture I don't like with a lot of lost edges. Hmm. Well, you can always add the edges in at the end. So keep that in mind. Like that's something you can add in later. Uh, Diana, that's looking so great. I'm, want, I'm looking at, I wanna, I'm, can you do me a favor, Diana? Do you have her photo? Yeah. Well, can you send it? I could go dig it out, but. No, I have it. I like the crop on this too. I like the kind of how the top of her head, I like that she's a little bit to the left and I like, that the, the, her body is kind of pushing to the right compositionally, that's really nice. And she's yet she's looking for us. So there's a lot of push and pull in this composition where I'm moving around, I'm sort of encouraged to move around the canvas. Does everybody get what I mean by that? If you can see, oh yeah, much better. Let's see. So I'm just looking. Yeah, it's still a lot, a, a bunch of adjustments I need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking to see if there's anything. Well, but the basics are good. I feel like her mouth still has to come up just a touch more. Um, it has to do with the smile she's got on her face yeah. and the, and I'm just telling you this because like I said before, this is where I always fall down is the mouth. I always want to put it too low. Um, and what I mean too low, it's usually like half a millimeter, but that's still yeah. But but look at the left side of the picture. It might be the wrong angle, and it needs to go down a little bit because you see the the part over the lip that has to. It is the right size, but it might need to go up a little bit on the right side. It needs that's to go up a little bit on the right side. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. So you need that sort of dark line to come, yeah, up more. Yep, yep, that'll do it. Uh, yeah, yep. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. The everything looks pretty good. And also, I like how you've reshaped her head. Uh, yep. It's in good shape. Thank you. Good fixing. I don't know whether I should have those no scripts on the glasses included. It kind of looks weird. Let me see. I kind of like those, but maybe they're, they're too big. Yeah, just. Um, you know what it is, actually? Her eyes are a little bit big for the shape of her glasses. Yeah. So her, if you bring her, you might, I, they're not bothering me, the nose clips right now work the rest of the okay and i wonder if yeah, the eyes are a little bit too big they're a little bit too big yeah. um also the shape of the glass on the on our left is kind of arching up a little bit too much it should, she should yeah yeah, yeah i so see that it should really mirror the angle of the mouth interestingly yeah. enough like that's the because she's tilting her head right it's so interesting how there's definitely a curve there, but how easy it is to get the curve too much, yeah. 
too big, right? Like this to make it too big. And then you wanna make sure that the top of her glasses on her right also goes up a little bit, right? Because yeah. her line, because of that tilt, the same thing you need to do with the mouth, you need to do with the top line of the glasses. Yeah, it's the top line. I have the corners match the angle. <laughs> Yeah, the corners match the angle, so that's good. So all you need to do is really kind of straighten up and uh, bring, maybe perhaps bring up the right, just a teeny touch. Yeah. Hopefully it's just straighten it more, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Easy for me. It's really easy to... But it's e yeah, it's easier to see on other's people. Yeah, but it's not and yours. Trying for your own, trying for your own work, so. But also, really honestly, the mouth is the hardest I have found. The mouth is really the toughest. Because even just a tiny, teeny, tiny bit off makes a massive difference. Yeah. Like you, it's funny, though, if you knew her, it really looks like her mouth, but it, it is in the wrong angle. Right. See, that's a funny thing. That's like where your left brain kind of colludes you know gets in the way of your right yeah you have a, a more complete picture of your mother that of course fills in all those details but is not necessarily true to the angle right at the end blah 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 yada yada all that stuff all right so let's So when you guys have all gotten your painting to this point, your drawing and your painting to this point, let me know. <clears throat> Rocks are tricky because they are squarer, so we can see the shifts in plane more clearly right than say like a shift in a piece of fruit or something but they can also be overwhelming because of all of those shifts so uh, that's the kind of challenge is to know where to pay attention and where to be less dramatic also as always i'm not really exactly sure how this painting is going to turn out so if you know <laughs> explore with me as we figure it out it's not my normal type of subject that I paint, that I like to paint. So I don't really know what's gonna make this painting come together. We are gonna figure it out together. Okay. 
So Pat, get a little darker. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. It's good. I'm gonna say it's good. Get some in the background. Get some in your background too. So when we start in the background, okay. I kept wiping it off the background. And also, <laughs> it's a little dark edge right here. You can't really see it in mine. So here, I'll kind of. Oh, on the side, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, mine kind of faded off a little bit too. I'm wondering if Tosh means wishing she had picked something else yet. <laughs> I'm just teasing Tosh Wien. That looks great. And the outside should be like a medium? The outside's pretty dark. Okay. You can see it here. Just, just like a little crusty edge. So question, please. Yes, ma'am. If my uh, black made off of burnt amber and indigo looks a bit green, I'm supposed to add... You might try more. ultramarine blue. Uh, indigo has got a little bit, is a little bit too green. Your ultramarine will have more red uh, and will interact more. I think it'll create a better black for you. Try it. Okay. I mean, I'm probably going to put him in grass, so right, right, a bit right. of green is okay, but... Yes, yes. I mean, you know, there's two blacks that I like to mix. The warmer one is ultramarine blue and burnt umber, and the cooler one is viridian green and alizar and crimson. Both of those, that makes a kind of cooler, crisper black. Um, if you bring any other blues into the picture, they tend to have a little bit too much... Uh, you know, like I said, indigo's got too much green, so it'll overwhelm and kind of pull in. It, it won't work like a proper complement. Um, yeah, which one of those would you choose behind, behind that goldfish? Oh, I don't, I can't, I'm not going to answer that question. I, you give me some ideas. I think your goldfish looks beautiful, and I feel like if I made that decision, it would be different than the decision you would make. There's a oh, lot of things. Okay. <laughs> but you could do blues because you know your goldfish is orange that would be any blue um or you could try i mean i don't know like you could try any green color anything um i think the picture was very the the background was very dark and it's almost a black yeah yeah you don't have to stick it. So you could also mix a black if you wanted to, but if you wanted to make that lighter and bluer, you totally could. But test it. Test a few different options uh, and put them right next to the fish so that you can see what each one does. Okay. Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it. Anybody else still working on this or are you guys ready to go on to the next? I think you're probably all ready to go on to the next. Nice, Eugene, very nice. So do just a very light wash. That's beautiful. Down in here, and then a light wash on the outside, but that's gorgeous. I love that mark making. Even now it's looking really good. I appreciate your taking that time at the detail. I tend to not in this stage, I'm a little bit sloppy because I know what happens on the next levels. Laziness, I don't know. What does that mean? You know what happens on the next level? I know I've, I've made enough paintings in my life that I know when when my paintings start to come. I know what I need to do. Okay. I know what I need to do. So you're not saying it doesn't really make a difference because you're going to cover it? Yep. You are I'm saying that, okay. Yeah, I'm going to add more detail in. But I okay. appreciate a underpainting with more detail. And that's just for me. That is just literally my process. I would not apply that to anyone else here. Ah, I'm going to be messy today. 
Uh, okay, Tosh, what are you using? Um, I, ran, I ran out of the burnt sienna from my lip quirk, so I have this. This looks like a really old acrylic. Is it possible? Wait, are you using acrylic? You're not using, um, oh, okay. So that's a good thing to know. You're not using, so you're not using, you're just using water. Yes. Yeah, it's just, that's just kind of an ugly color. I'd go orange before I would go that color. Um, but it's burnt sienna. That's what it says. But it doesn't yeah, look not, It doesn't look right. And should I just throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. It also looks like kind of from a kid's set or something. Am I right on that? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, throw that out. Mix a little bit of cadmium red and yellow. Put that down in the darker areas. Just go quickly over the top. Yeah. <laughs> also, you know, every company mixes their paints differently and the cheaper the paint, the more other shit is put in it that makes it less pure of pigment. So, yeah, but also old and black, that kind of thing. Okay. While you guys are doing that, I'm gonna start mixing colors. Let me see. So definitely, I'm going to just mix colors here for a moment, uh, and then I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. But you're welcome to watch. You keep working on wherever you're at as well. I'm looking at the photo in the red. Bring the photo up to the front. So that's a very pinky purple. So definitely quinacridone red or rose is going to be playing a role. A bit of ultramarine blue, but I'm guessing not as much to be wrong. There's going to be some white. There's going to be some yellow. I'm going to put, I'm going to start, I'm going to put two yellows down. One is yellow ochre. The other is It is like cadmium yellow from both down. Let me see what they do. Maybe a little bit closer. And then I'm also going to throw down some burnt umber just in case. And a little bit of alzar and crimson just in case things don't go. Well, with the pornography I'm really wondering is if I should put another blue down. I'm going to. Okay. So. We have five or six colors here. We've got, we've got twin red or rose. I've got ultramarine blue. I've got alizar and crimson. So I've got a, a lighter red and a darker red. And then I've got yellow ochre. Add yellow, medium. And over here, I have burnt umber with my burnt snow. And obviously, white. I got pink all over my phone. Hold on. All right. So here is my. Here's 
my basic palette. This is very magenta y. Here's the basic palette. And as I start mixing, okay, there's going to be definitely more red than blue. But it's going to be this kind of pinky color. So the question is, but I won't really be able to tell if it's working until I mix a little bit of white in there. Would you take a picture of those colors? I did. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Priority to you, labeled and everything. Sienna. What does that say? There's like, so you see it's very pinky red and then in places it's a little bit bluer. So I'm mixing one with a little bit more blue in it, but mostly it's kind of this pink red, reddish purple. So that's, this is a Quinn red. And then I'm going to do the same thing with Alizar and Crimson just to see what it looks like. So Alizar and Crimson need some blue. Uh, yeah. Might be nice to have a little bit of this, although you can see it's definitely redder than purpler. So even though this is purple, the red is way more dominant in these mixes. And in some places down here, there's a touch of, in the shadow areas, there's a touch of, oh yeah, I like that. This is yellow ochre in with my purple mix. Interest. So I want to mix a few different pinky purples. And as I do this, the nice thing about oil is that it won't dry. I can sort of wipe my, uh, with my rag or my paper towel, I can wipe off in between so I don't mix between these colors. Oh dear, what is that? A little bit more. Blue. What's the color in between burnt sienna and ultramarine? Alizar and crimson. Alizar and crimson. Okay. Alizar. I have two pink. I have a small. I have a a a, 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 a darker cool red and a lighter cool red. So this is like. Qr plus blue plus white. This one is uh, a C plus blue plus white. And this one is one of these mixes with um, yellow ochre to create a kind of gray. It's really pink. It's way more pink than I want it to be. That's what I keep thinking myself. And then I'm going to think about applying this. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this source as I'm doing it. I'm gonna apply this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need a lot more color. Using my palette knife across the kind of darker areas. Obviously I'm gonna need a lot more blue. <laughs> I'm going to need to mix a lot more color. So I was experimenting with color and then I tried to use it and I needed way more than I had. So here we go, mixing a lot of color. Using Is my cad yellow light or medium? Medium. 
Okay. I haven't used it, to be honest. Sorry, I'm falling behind over here. No, 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 no. No, I haven't used it. I thought I'd read, I labeled it, but it's impossible to see. So you're absolutely right on to ask. Um, I need a lot of this. Right? So, and every one of these mixes has some, so I'm kind of going where the darkest areas are with my kind of dark purple mix. You see how I'm kind of following around, laying it on. So I'm using my palette knife to kind of scrape it on. And the sort of patterns of how this is happening. Most of this dark here is going into um, is going right into the dark section here. Interesting that. And then I'm mixing a lighter section, more pinky, more white, less blue. Still some blue, but not as much. Oh dear. And then I'm going to stop so you guys can catch up. And I'm noticing in the lighter section, there's more yellow in the mix. Yeah, the top is quiet. Not helpful. Um, Hold on. Trying to move my lights a little bit. So yeah, palette knife is really the tool you want to use um, if you've got it. If not, you'd want to use a real big, thick brush. So I'm trying to get this lined up like that. That's better. And there's still a difference in here. Nope. Kathy is complaining. Someone is complaining. So notice as I lay down my darker purples here and my medium purples here, curvy pinks here, that I'm letting some of, I'm layering, I'm doing kind of thick swipey layers with my, um, with my palette knife and I'm leaving little bits of the orange coming through. I'm trying not to completely cover. If you do not have a palette knife, you're gonna use a brush. So right now it's looking kind of messy, so. Um, I'm not using any medium either. I'm just using basic paint. Thank you. 
Tell me what the yellow was for. The yellow is to mix in with the purple in places to create a more shadowy purple. Oh, okay. Leah? Yes. Well, you've got a second. I need some rabbit advice. You got it. <laughs> I'm a little bit at the stage where I think I'm either not going to make it or I've ruined it. <laughs> Send it over. Thank you. You always say that and then it gets. I know, I know, but of. Uh, just that's it's right because it's a black rabbit you know black is not black right white is one not white and black is not black why have you ruined it what it is is it you're ruining it just it is it doesn't look well because it's not dark enough yet i know no but it doesn't look it doesn't look okay. You need more blue and purple. Okay, I have a lot of blue, but to the left he was a bit reddish, brownish. However, it's because he's on a red carpet. Right. Which I am not going to put him on a red carpet. Yeah, that is what reflects to make it purple. Right. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Uh, he's in good shape, Sandra. Yeah, he is. Um, the so purple goes where? you darken him you can use blue too because the purple is because he's on the red carpet so it reflects i have a the the underneath is almost all blue like you know like the forehead always always on under yeah, under. yeah. okay anyway yeah. i think you're in good shape me too okay here your darker colors on top so the brown what is the the Viridian and Alizarin Crimson, you were saying that's a nice black, Leah? Uh, Alizarin um, uh, Crimson and Viridian Green. Thank you. Okay, so Tosh, you're going a little dark and you're not really mixing your, are you using a brush or, or a, a palette knife? Palette knife. You're not really mixing your colors enough. Uh, that ne it needs to be lighter, pat and pinker. Less lighter and what? Lighter and pinker. Pinker. Pink, lighter and pinker. So you're probably you're not mixing enough with your palette knife. So you're. Let me see. What did I just do with my palette knife? I have it here. Oh. Here's another one. You're doing this, you're kind of grabbing stuff, you're grabbing something like this, and then you're and then you're laying it down like that, right? Mix it a little bit more, blend it a little bit more. Use your palette knife to mix. You don't need all that, like those, those sort of thick and and you're laying it down. Let's see, how do I put this? You're laying it down. Yeah, you're really just not blending your uh, colors enough. You're acting like you're trying to get all this detail in, these sort of finished details in the top. If you look at my base, you'll see it's much more clean. We're not really doing all of the detail yet. We're not adding in the variation and detail. So look at this, blend more. And uh, you can scrape the paint off before it dries. So scrape it off, pull it back onto your palette. What you're doing is creating way too many, yeah, there you're making like brush marks with your palette. Look at this, look at this palette knife. This is a clean, here, used up all my paint, so let's see. This is a clean sweep. Yours looks like this. Dab, 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 dab. Right, uh, Tosh? There's no dabbing here. These are cleaner, bigger marks. We're going to add our detail later. 
these little weird sort of things that look like fingers ran through them. Those don't look like what's happening on the on the surface. Anyway, first time using a palette knife, not surprising. It's a little tricky. And back. I'm sorry, Leah. I didn't just sign off because you gave me feedback. Oh, because I was like saying you needed to fix that. I figured as much. <laughs> Yeah. I hope um, you're off crying somewhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that like doing that. So you're you're you need to be much more smooth. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna Not, start over. I scraped it off and I'm gonna start again. Up and try again. Yeah, scrape it off. Don't start over over, but scrape it off before it dries quickly because it will start drying. So when you're creating texture, if you're not thoughtful about your texture, if you're not making your marks look like the shapes that are there, people will notice, right? Like they'll notice and they'll wonder, why is that groove there of white in the dark? Because it's not really happening here, right? So they will notice, if I, I tell this often to people who are like, here it is, background, da 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 this way, that way, and I'm like, now you gotta pay a little bit more attention to your background uh, because, um, because I, if I see a brush mark going this way and going this way, I'm gonna expect it to be demarcating something. And if it's not doing that obviously, then it looks amateur. Looks like you don't know what you're doing. Looks like you didn't make a decision about what you're doing. So the viewer sees everything, everything. And it, you know, so you need to make sure things go along. So when I'm getting to the lighter parts of the I get to the lighter areas of the crystal. Thank you. 
I have a lot, I have little bits of the purple in, but it's mostly white, right? Okay. Gonna probably need a lot of white on this, in this bit. And actually, the purple that's in here is quite gray. So I'm mixing in a little bit of yellow ochre into my purple and then blending that in with my white. I like, although it's lighter, has lots of sort of purpley gray. Lots. I'm looking the whole time at this piece. So as I see where this white kind of goes, which is mostly on the bottom, but also in parts in the top here too, and in the middle section, I'm using my swords. And part of the problem you'll have, Tosh, is that uh, acrylic paint just doesn't, it's not as thick and rich as um, oil paint. So you're not gonna have that same experience. Right? Uh, it's, uh, this is a little bit more like a very thick buttercream frosting. <laughs> uh, and what we've got is plastic. Frankly, you know, that's what acrylic thing is. Kind of plastic things. No offense, Diana. I know, I know. Louis, <laughs> I I'm know. working in tea and milk. She's holding herself back. She's like, damn it. Don't you, don't you bless for me, my beautiful acrylic. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, if when you're working with a palette knife, particularly, look at how. So you see, I've laid in these three layers fairly loosely, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to mix burnt umber with, oh, ran out of gold again. Burnt umber and a little bit of piano with ultramarine blue. So I've got something to put kind of in here. Uh, it's not bad, Pat, except that you left, uh, we don't have enough of your in, the, the base coming through. So I feel like this is more of a flat, you're going to have to work a little harder to pull out the variations, right? Because you didn't leave enough of these coming through to kind of create some natural texture. It'll happen, but it's pretty like you're what like you're going to need to get very light on these top lighter on these top layers in places to really show the variation between um your your light your medium and your dark are you looking at are you looking at mine or are you looking at the the actual source looking at, <coughs> at yours you really need to look at the source here you really need to look at the source here right Look at the source to see. So uh, on your top layers, you're going to be wanting more of this light, this sort of pink, and then this more purpley color up here. 
Whereas I think you've just got this flat kind of Pepto-Bismol kind of happening, right? Mostly here. Right. Yeah. I don't know what to do. About gonna, that. Well, you're going to have to cover it up. With lighter color or with? Well, yeah. <laughs> Not a darker color. So you're going to want to, you, you may even Pat want to scrape off in the lightest areas, that area, that's that purple that you have, because it really is too dark. Okay. Scrape it off. So you can just pull it off, scrape it, and then go in with lighter color. So don't look at mine. Don't look at mine and try to make mine, because you're going to oversimplify mine and, and get more. Really look at the source as you're trying to get these things down. Okay. Because you just exaggerated two things that were happening in mine, and that was the problem, right? All right. This is where mine is right now. Also looking at my background and thinking that I probably am just going to mix some yellow and white. I mean yellow and white for my background. Plain old yellow and white. And when I apply this, I'm going to try and be smoother. I might even use a brush. I like that the black layer. It's a nice one, isn't it? It's super yep. crisp. It's very crisp and cool. When you want a crisp, cool, uh, the I almost always opt for ultramarine blue and burnt umber because I like a kind of warmer, muddier black, but um, redder black. But it, it is a really, you know, the uh, Viridian green. Bridget. And um, what you gonna call it? Um, and the and they, it makes a very crisp, cool uh, black. I think of a very efficient secretary. <laughs> of that uh, I'll, uh, I'll I'll try the other one as well. Uh, might as well, seeing as this it's all black. Yeah. You might as well okay, explore the black. black. So you might be able to use it somewhere else. Yes. So now I'm kind of working in and around. In and around here. To get my, to just get some background in. Also with my palette knife, but making bigger, more sweeping strokes. Still letting little bits of the underpainting come through because actually those are going to stay some of those are going to really stay they provide some nice i 
I'm also sharpening some of the outside. I'm using my palette knife to kind of sharpen some of the outside edges. Coming right up to the edge. Not forgetting to clean up my palette knife in between. I want to go into areas that are a little bit darker. This shadow. So this is kind of our first pass, is this pass. You want to let some of your background come through. You want to make sure that your transitions between dark, medium, and light are coming through. And then when you get your, your background in, you want to use that as the opportunity to kind of take your palette knife to sweep in an edge like this and make it a little bit harder. Right, so so squishy and soft. Uh, you should all be looking at the source. You can look at my painting as a way of um, kind of uh, giving yourself an idea of what kind of strokes work, but uh, each of you're probably going to miss some of the nuances that are happening in here and oversimplify. So I want you to look at the source, not my work, for how you lay down your first layers here. And if you feel like you've got it down and it's too harsh um, or it's too much, just scrape it up and take it off and pull it back onto your palette. This is a back and forth thing. And don't expect it to be, be good at it right away. Expect this will take a little bit of practice to kind of get the nuance, this feeling of rock stone. Also this value differentiation that's coming around. Also, you do not have to make your background um, yellow. I just did it because this is a purple crystal and it was the quickest, easiest kind of way for me to think, and I had yellow on my palette. You can make your background any color you wanted. However, if you make it pink, it's probably going to fade. It's probably gonna push your whole thing back. So the, the one color I would not make it is pink or red, any color but that. Or if you are, make sure there's a, a reason for doing it. Mm 
much time, by the way, do you guys think has gone by? Uh, just not looking at your watch, but just guessing. <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes, I would say. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, hour 15. It's been almost two hours. Wow. Uh, and I still can't get the right color purple. <laughs> um, you probably need to use less white. Try mixing a little bit more red. You want blue in there, but not enough to make it, but it's still fairly pinkish. Maybe I've got too much blue. That's probably true. I've got about, I've got four or five different shades here and none of them are in that same family. Hmm. Let me, should we send them to you? Maybe there's something I'm missing. Yeah, send it to me, but also use less blue, please. You probably use what what lose yeah. this blue yeah probably know it <sighs> yeah you just need less blue you know also okay. pat yourself a new uh, palette. I was just on my way over to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a new piece of palette paper so you have room to, you're just, you know, you're just heavy handed in the mixing. So you're using too much of all the color, less of the white, you know, too little of the white. And then you've got so much color there, you try to throw something in, it just becomes more muddy. When something is, is too dark and too going in a certain direction, you try mm -hmm. not to mix more into the same pile. You try oh, to I do that all the time. That yeah. pile and move it elsewhere and then use the proper mix. You won't get anywhere. It's like a, a black hole or a um, like a bog. You just keep throwing stuff in, it stays the same shade. So you need okay. to move it to the, you know, to a new, you need a new playing field, as it were. Better, Tosh, better, much better. Good job. Do it. <laughs> yeah, so more mixing, right? So now, now your job is to kind of look at, yeah, you're just going to continue working around, mostly looking at the edges where light meets dark, medium meets dark, right? And adding in some of those more details as you see them. Some dark, you can do it with your palette knife. You can actually do it with a brush. Like here, let me grab a, a brush and show you what I mean by that. So here there's some nice, oh, it's looking really good. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I love it. I love to see the canvas. Hold on, let me get back to the source. So as I come up here, I see, oh, I don't like that feeling of that brush. I don't like a brush that doesn't have a, a little bit of give to it. More, of course, I need more blue. So as much as like blue is not the dominant, I keep running out of it. So as I come in here, I see that there's kind of a purpley, let's see, I guess it would be here. Right, so I'm kind of going in with my brush and adding in that kind of darker purpley piece. And then just to the left of it, I see a lighter piece. I see that this gets pinker and lighter as I come down. So I'm starting to kind of work those top areas 
to get a little bit more variation of more of the variation that's happening. Here, up here, I can see. And I'm actually having a lot of success switching from my palette knife to my brush. And I'm really, I'm looking at the sort of more minute color shifts now. So I'm looking at how like, Uh, it's possible that you, Tosh, are going to have the advantage in this piece because for those of us working in oil, there's only probably so far we're going to get. So you see how I'm coming in here and I'm looking at where there's like, like little triangles of light within the darkness. And the, is this a peachy color or a bluish color? I'm, I'm paying more attention to that now. So it helps to have my brush kind of in here. I'm looking at this here and seeing that I can really use a light shift here. Whereas this is really darker, much darker actually. For those of you who are using oil, you'll see I'm actually mixing right into my, so you see how I'm starting to add this detail in. Bill, what kind of brush are you using? Is it a flat brush? I always use a flat brush, yes. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything other than I like to use flat brushes, so. And I find those little holes in the middle totally annoying and distracting, so I'm ignoring them. I'm not putting them in, but if you like them, that's great. I'm coming, I'm noticing in some areas I want more, I want my background to be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm coming in and working in my background details. In some areas, it's just not. along the way, you're going to be needing to problem solve. You're going to be needing to figure out how do I, I want these sort of distinct, you know, shapes. So how do I do that with, when I'm using like one brush, right? So how do you do that when you're using one brush? You're cleaning your brush off a lot. With the oil, what I'm finding is I can blend a little bit. If I'm trying to sort of create pinks and lights, I can blend a little bit more because I, my colors stay wet. Acrylic, you you're gonna you're gonna be able to just go right over, right? It'll dry. Leave it for 20 minutes. 
soil, I've got to be a little bit more aware. Colors are going to be blending more with my lights. I'm not using any medium right now. I'm just literally using paint. I'm trying to maintain those sharp edges too. It's tough. Kind of going back in there and easy to get lost. So these are all things. You're gonna need to be kind of aware of. at the point where I'm going to need another piece of palette paper soon because I'm running out, but I'm, I'm holding off until the very last minute. But I'm definitely going in with more sort of darker yellow in some places to reinforce the background. In some cases, my oil kind of drifted over into the background. And it's possible us oil people may not be able to entirely finish this until next week. We're gonna try. People are gonna have an easier time. You don't have to worry about your paint mixing so much. Another thing I'm finding myself doing is sometimes I have to go right in with my oil paint over an area to kind of recover it. Thing, this isn't a pencil drawing, I'd be completely bored by <laughs> now if we were doing this in pencil. I would have absolutely no interest in trying to work on it anymore. Fortunately, it is not like that. I hope this has been a fun exercise for you too, since you say you don't really do this that often. Yeah, I like it. It's kind of fun. And the variations are so tiny. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, I was thinking that this is a really interesting like 
hard edge, soft edge exercise. Exactly. Uh, and you know, when I used to do the painting exercises for oil, I did it that way. I just noticed that people in this class were starting to get bored with that. But maybe we'll go back to more sort of one ounce like this, not necessarily to create paintings, finished paintings, but more to like practice different techniques. We've definitely done rocks before, but it's been a while. So I like the idea. So we might go back to kind of more of these one-off like exercises. So interesting. Yes, I appreciate it very much. That is all pink. I can't, I can't get the color. Okay. You need to use a lot more white and a lot, a lot, you need to get a lot more white in there to really see what that color is going to be. But, you know, in little pieces, so make a little piece of, I think what's happening is you're still making that same mistake. You're making a big pile of color and then you're, um, just feeding more into that same pile. So if the pile isn't going the way you expect it to, move it. Take a little bit, just a little bit of it and move it to another pile. Just keep working it. Because I can't reach over there and do it for you and you wouldn't learn anything that way anyway if I did it. So this is the practice, is working on the mixing. Are either of these worth moving? Either I of these three? I can't, I think so. I don't know because I can't really see what's, um, I, I, I mean, until I see, I don't really know. So I guess the answer is yes. You're thinking about it too much. You should just be quickly making the judgment. This isn't working. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this and move it somewhere else instead of Hmm, should I maybe move the, you know what I mean? Like, don't make it so many steps in your head. Just think, oh, this isn't working the way I think it is. So I'm going to quickly shift some of this over here and see if that makes it any better with a little bit more white to it. You should it never gets to the blueness of that, of your purple. Well, then what does that tell you? I don't have enough blue, but you just told me I had too much blue, so I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> I mean, you're getting very literal here in a way that's, that's not helping, that's blocking you. So you're overthinking this. You need to be mixing more quickly, right? So instead of like looking at a pile going, does this work? Okay, oh, no, this is working. I'm going to take a little bit of this over here and add more blue to it. See if that works. I'm going to take a little bit of this more here. Instead of steadily building up one pile that's going to frustrate you you know what i'm saying so give me well, yeah I'm, and i'm doing that and i'm still getting frustrating color so i uh this is there's no way to go through this except to keep adjusting until you get it right well this may be just a color class for me then that's which is fine totally fine that is totally fine Keep mixing. I know you, you're going to get there. <laughs> you just need the time to get there. Oh, 
finding myself doing a lot of carving in and out with light and dark shapes. Once I've got kind of my basic uh, pieces in there, I'm now strictly working with my brush so I can kind of do more minute that and moving back and forth, back and forth, this process. Shadow is important too. Shadow can be kind of a darker purple. You can maybe dramatize it a little bit. Not as dark as this sort of little crust, the geode crust at the bottom, but it's dark. Well, you can kind of push it a little darker if you want to. Notice that as it moves farther away from the geode, it gets lighter. It blends with a little bit of the yellow. It becomes less distinct. Yeah, that's starting to look a little bit more. Yeah, mommy, it's been hours since I've eaten not. <laughs> <laughs> he, always, he just ate. He just, no, he's talking to himself outside. Uh, now I know when your cats are lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, mommy, I'm so hungry. <laughs> he's, he's outside or talking to the birds or something. <laughs> I wish you could see the Herminator right now. He's sleeping in the apartment with the 
laying on our bed, just all stretched out and looking really cute. So this rabbit is uh, not great. It's a lot worse than when I did it before. I'm sending it to you. I'm a little bit lost. I've never done a black animal like this in watercolor, I don't it's think. It's possible for you to say you might take one more, you know, you might, this might be your practice cast. Yes, I was thinking that too. And it may be that I pick a different photo. Right. Uh, there is a much easier photo for me. If, if I think it would look like a strange portrait, but they sent it to me. Okay. So, so I guess it would be acceptable to them. Let's see it. Let's see what you kind of learned here. Well, <laughs> I think the forehead is too okay. I mean. Oh, I see what you mean, but that's kind of, um, it needs to be darker. But I also think but, his eyes are too wide. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Sandra. Do this as the practice pass, so you don't feel stressed about creating a great final product. Um, so the, so the eyes are on the side of the face, but you have them much wider, right? Oh. And the lights are too light. Yes, that I can see. But what do I darken with? Some blue, some dark blue? I would mix- Because uh, they're not black. I would mix ultramarine blue and brown and use that. Ultramarine blue and brown. So I've got that and it's a very, very dark mix. So water, it down, water it down, water it down, water it down. Because we're okay with this being a practice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you're doing like these little pieces of reflection of the rabbit, remember that a little bit has to come through of sort of consistency, right? Black still, right? base color still need to get in there even if it's lighter they it still needs to get that's the challenge right that's like the super hard part i mean i've seen it done they make it look so easy because they're paying attention to that and part of a problem i had also is i started with um you know wet washes to kind of blend the edges but yep. then you're not getting the color so in the end, you have to go much more thickly, and then you're not really going wet, so. Right, right. Are you still trying to do wet on wet for this thing? So, on some, in some areas, but not others, like, I started the years like that, and in the end, didn't. Right. Uh, I mean, I had a layer on top that was, had to be much blacker, because that's the hardest, the muzzle, and the ears, and the front of the feet, but the part that's not white in the front of the feet, are the darkest areas. And I wasn't getting black enough. Right, right. So I found it went out, all out. So, yeah. So, you know, it's like kind of finding a consistent dark you can put everywhere. And then you adjust the darks on top. So, yes, ideally. Right. It, it didn't kind of pan out like that. Okay. But, yeah, play around and see what happens as you add that. My, I mean, my instinct was to put a kind of bluish brown on there. Okay, thank you. Those lights, let's see what happens. Also, if there's one with a sort of better light, um, light dark. So there's one, which is just the head, which frankly I prefer. I think you should probably think, send it over. Love to see yeah. it. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a difficult that one. Oh, my gosh, that's coming along. Yeah. <laughs> so if I were you, bring in a little bit of 
lighter color down here in this base of this shadow. Because your shadow right now looks like, it doesn't look like a shadow. It looks like um, just the tabletop. Oh, yeah. What color should I do that? I kind of made it up. I mean, you know, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow mixed in with purple. OK, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. That's looking great, though. Are you pleased with it? Um, yeah, I definitely want to put in a little bit more time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yes, it's definitely one of those things. So for those of us doing, um, so one thing that might you might want to do at this point is take a break and then glaze it with a color. So okay. And then go back in and add more things. That's what I'm, and, and in fact, if you hold off on finishing this till next week, uh, I'll have all of us who are doing this together and oil do the same thing. So we in oil now can't do that, right? We have to wait for three days or probably a week until this dries. And actually I've laid so much paint on here, it may even take longer. Um, so you can go back in with a glaze and then go back out and pu pull out your lights and your lights will have a kind of richer consistency. So that is really, but we can't do that on this one. We'll have to wait uh, the following week, but work on the shadow a little bit and see what happens. How, Pat, how's it going with mixing over there? <laughs> Not yet, huh? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever cried in your class, but I'm, I'm pretty close right now. Just, just, just keep trying. Just keep trying until you, until you get it. I think I'm closer, but. Send it over. You know, I sent you the easier rabbit. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Pat, you're getting closer. Get closer. Absolutely. Um, oh, he looks like he's all like flat. <laughs> it looks cute. strange as a portrait. I mean, in a way, it's much easier because the light is better. I can see the edge. I mean, you know, the eyes. And the lights and darks are much more apparent. I just do that one. Yeah, I think it's going to be much easier, isn't it? Do it. It's lovely. And Pat, you're getting there. Don't worry. Just keep going. Okay. Going until you get it. For some people, this process of mixing is going to be really fast. And for others, it's going to be slower. Just depends on how quick you are with color to see it, adjust it, right? Like, play, and that's for every person. So, uh, the part I'm making such a mess is being able to, you know, not have your paints dry so fast. So slower at mixing colors. Okay. Ah. All right. See you Tuesday. Bye, kiddo. This is a good time to stop. Uh, depending on how your paintings are going, you may I, I'm going to stop at this point just because I feel like I want this to dry before I did anything else to it. And what I'd like to do is glaze it, but I can't do that until next week. So sure. if other, when you get to this point, if you have other paintings, um, you want to work on this would be a great kind of pull out. And at any time, Pat, you want to stop and start working on your fish background, you can also do that. If you get tired no, I can't do that, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> Purple. I will get them. I 
it's I don't have them exactly, so it's not an exact. It doesn't have to be exact. I, th I think I'm adding white now. I think I may have I may have actually come to a, a color that will work, if not the perfect color. Yay! And then you so then you can, and uh, yeah, so then you have a little time to paint. Right. The rest of us have kind of shot our wad already. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this white is not denting it. So if the white's not denting it, you need to take a little tiny corner of the pile, put it in with white. You don't take we'll put it in with, yeah, I keep forgetting that rule. Put it in with white instead of the other way around. Yeah, if that, that's the one thing you get out of this class, it'll be that. <laughs> if it's not working, you can see that immediately. Stop what you're doing. Stop pouring in paint that you're just going to throw away. Right, it's a waste. Uh, but once you get this kind of neutral green value, it's really hard to get it out. This is pretty dark. I like your uh, blues in your base there. So my Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you, Dean. You just said. Oh. My suggestion is also to stop here. Yours looks kind of redder, which is fine. It's not really purple. Um, so if that makes you feel better, if you can look at Eugene's chat, you can see it looks nice, but um, he doesn't have those purples down. His are more reds. But here's my suggestion, Eugene. My suggestion is to put it aside or to paint in the background, whatever color you want. And then Next week, we will spend a little bit of time working on this before we jump into the next project. So next week, we'll do some glazing and a little bit of adjusting after it dries. Hopefully, it's drying a week. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be drying a week, but my hope is it will. It is the summer. It should dry faster. I'm going to try one more thing with the putting the color in the white and see if, see if I don't. Have it now. Yeah, not bad. I think now is the time to start letting some of your colors down, Pat. Okay. Got a lot of different colors working. Diana, how goes your uh, how just goes your painting? Maybe she's taken Sunny out. Oh, I bet she has. Yeah. Sunny's painting up nicely. 
becoming a very, very good doggy. Yes, she's improved. But Diana is making a lot of efforts with her. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I just guess she's needed. maturing too. And just what Diana needed, right? A little bit of. Yes, absolutely. Her, keep her distracted. Lion escaped this morning. What's that? Lion escaped this morning and I didn't notice. Shit head. So how do you get him back? Well, uh, I suddenly, uh, I thought the dragon was very noisy and I went to look for dragon and then, and then I suddenly realized I was, didn't see Leon anywhere. So I called him, called him, checked the whole house. And then he was going out to the garden to find him. And as soon as I opened the garden gate, he came rushing in very embarrassed, like crawling almost on the ground, like he'd been scared and trying to come back in. So, but I still don't know, I don't know how he got out, so I'll have to check that. But yeah. I think he spooked himself, so that was good. <laughs> You're so, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> Why? what's happening? Because he thinks it's very funny when I go find him, but I wasn't going fine, I, did, I didn't notice for a long time. Um, this is what I worry about with Hermes, is that he'll just get out and he'll be like, I don't even know what is happening. They get scared and if they jump in the wrong place, that's a problem, right? They can, they can get- I mean, I'm surrounded by gardens, but past the garden, there's like parking lot and roads and- Right. My rabbit still looks disastrous, but it's improved. Good. I mean, Good. thinking of it as an exercise, it still looks wrong, but let's see. I can't seem to fix that forehead. It's too light, in other words. I know, I know, but uh, I but keep trying to dock in it, but now asking. It's somehow. It's too light. Okay. It's good to know. It's good to keep in mind. Yeah, it's good to know. Um, you're like, great. What I learned about watercolor at first was, you know, preserve the areas that are light. Now I learn it's possible to go too light. Well, fuck that. <laughs> and then you can't, the layers are there underneath. So even if you put something really dark, it doesn't look right. Yeah, yeah. So there needs to be maybe a lighter wash. I yep. think what I don't know how to do is to do a wet on wet, but with very strong paint. Mm -hmm. Because so, when you do wet, wet on wet, you don't necessarily want to go back over and over and over. And I'm having to do that because I, that's when it, it looks fantastic and then when it dries, it's too pale. So maybe that's something you should just practice that edge, a, a dramatic. So Sandra, my suggestion before you go into another painting is just to literally practice a very dark dramatic uh, wet on wet edge until you feel like you have a little control of it. Just just literally do edges. I mean, it's not the edge, the problem. It's the, uh, the, the color, it's too pale. Like well, the edge looks fantastic, but the color itself, like the ears, for instance, they were too pale, too pale, too pale. In the end, I had to go with really thick paint to make them dark, but now 
I don't have a soft edges anymore, if you see what I mean. Yes, so your, pre your job is to practice going dark. Going dark straight away, but yeah. right on the way. And just doing it in swatches until you kind of get an understanding of how it works. Um, and there, people talk about this, you know, they say you have to go, because obviously because the paper is wet and the paint is wet, it sort of lightens up everything. So yeah. you have to make up for that with uh, thicker paint, but I'm not getting it. I'm not matching. So you want to go darker and you want to practice it. Yep. Practice it on paper without practicing it on a rabbit. Just practice the <laughs> layering on paper. Because for black rabbit, you need that scale of wet and wet and previous washers, which were like, in fact, uh, um, what is it? It's supposed to be indigo, you know, underneath. Yep, yep. <laughs> I must say commissions are very stressful. Yeah. I don't know. Never get used to it. Uh, you never get used to it. I, I don't know. I'll ever enjoy it. Well, it's not always about enjoying it, right? It's about, about making money. <laughs> what motivates one to do something well. So uh, commissions add that extra edge to, to, to incentivize you to really problem solve until you figure it out. But that doesn't mean, you know, it's like saying, I don't want to act unless I never have stage fright. That, that it's just part of the deal. It's just sort of deciding what works for you. Except that you don't have to go commercial or professional. Do you know what I mean? You can continue painting in your living room for your own pleasure. Sure, sure. If that's what and you then want. you could also sell paintings which you already painted without any commissions. Sure. Sure. But it is. But it doesn't. Very gratifying to get. The it does encourage you to get better. That's right. So it's one way of forcing yourself to get better. Right. Uh, you never get over your fear. You don't. Of course, you don't ever have to like jump out of an airplane with a parachute, right? To get over your fear of heights, like. And in fact, I probably will never do this. I have a fear of heights and I will never probably jump out. Of it. However, if I really wanted to confront my fear of heights, that's probably what I'd do. <laughs> but you wouldn't necessarily join the Marines and do it professionally. Right, but I would do it, right, to really confront the fear. So fear is not a bad thing. It's just, it's a pressure, you know, it's pressure and pressure as opposed to just fun and pleasure. Yes. Is what this is for me. Except I've never been a believer in anything being just fun and pleasure. It's not my. That's opinion. right. As soon as you become a job, it's different. Well, it's not even that. I just, even things I do for fun, I don't do for just fun and pleasure. Like, I, really? yeah, I like to go at things hard. So to me, it just seems normal to put a little bit of uh, incentivizing elements in there. But I get it. I mean, it's just, it just depends on what works. It just depends on how you get the balance, on getting the balance. Um, Marie is really, my teacher on Sundays at Pastel Landscapes, is really afraid of talking in front of people. She doesn't need to work for me. She has a full-time job making way better money than I do. She doesn't have to work for me at all. She works for me because she wants to overcome that fear. Really? Yes. So she's a great teacher. And uh, she's a great teacher partly because she has a little fear in her every time. I don't think she'd mind me sharing this. I think people would think it's funny because she's such a good teacher. You wouldn't yeah, because it's not noticeable at all. 
Yes, but it's definitely there. So she does it partly because I told her, look, when you get to a level, you're only going to get better as a painter if you if you teach what you know. That's going to help you. And so she wanted to get better as a painter. And then she thought it was an added incentive for her that she finds speaking projects quite terrifying. It might be that doing it online is also not as not as scary. Yeah, maybe. You know, it's a good transition. Took away her fear, though. I think she has it. I think she has it pretty good. I, I mean, when she, didn't, to a when she didn't realize it was she counted on like in the in the studio, she's a great teacher. Yeah. Even then, yeah. In the studio, she was a great teacher, but yeah. she's always been afraid, really afraid of teaching. She's always been afraid of speaking in public. So she does. I mean, it. everybody's afraid of speaking in public to a certain extent, you know. It's not something that comes naturally to anyone. You just. I'm not afraid of speaking in public at all. Not at all. Uh, I feel a little something every time I do, but I'm okay doing it. Even, even if kind of my heart is pounding and so on. I mean, not in these classes, I mean, like giving a speech, you know, or. I never, I never do. I love it. I get like charged. It's like the most exciting thing. But you get um, something. Um, you know, not a bad beginning, Pat, but you can see that what happened is kind of the same thing that happened with your piles, right? In that you were mixing, right? So like sorry guys, I had to take a work call. That's okay. Um, so the biggest thing here is that I uh, this is not bad, it's better than it was, but notice that what's happened is you've kind of mixed all your colors together so they all look the same. Like this value looks exactly the same as up here and down here and over here. I can see you starting to kind of try and fix that. Um, but you can see that, yeah, this is just a mixing challenge. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, I had to stick in with some work there. So I'm back. On a Sunday? Jesus. Yeah, it's, you know, we have this contest that all judging is coming back. Judging deadline was August 1st. And I still don't have all the results in from across the country. And it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. You have to be like a kindergarten teacher to get everyone in a board. Herding journalists is not always the most fun. Oh, Jesus. Yes, I can only imagine. Honestly, hurting anyone is awful. Groups of anyone is awful. Try getting artists. Yes. Yeah, it's the same thing. That's oh, the same awful. thing. My favorite thing now is that it, our, our hundred artists are constantly accusing us of uh, not getting emails, but I can open and see that they've opened and read. Yeah, yeah, we get the same thing. We get the same thing. Oh, you know, they'll come out, they'll go out on like, I, and honestly, anybody can listen to this tape and hear this. I'm going to say right now, the vast majority, you know, uh, uh, I did not get the email is really the dog ate my homework. Yeah. <laughs> The biggest bullshit response I have ever heard in my entire life. It's like, oh what? Oh, I only check my email once every two months. Or <laughs> because it's so unessential to my job. <laughs> um, or um, I didn't see that email, and I'm like, I'm looking at the email. It hit your email. It hit your box at two thirteen p.m. You opened it at two seventeen p.m. So what exactly didn't you see? <laughs> Did you not see this email? Oh, that email. That email. <laughs> the best I forgot to read it. <laughs> the, best one, the best ones we get is when we send out invoices for memberships or other thing, okay. and people don't pay, and we send reminders. Oh, I never got that invoice. And we can see on the in QuickBooks yes. that they've opened it 28 times. Yes. It. Oh, that email. <laughs> oh, that's the voice. That. 
Ed's email. <laughs> okay, good. Now we're starting to get that tilt in. There you go. Starting to happen. Very nice, Diana. Um, oh, that email. Yeah, what really bothers me is our artists have this tendency to announce to the world that 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 our organization hasn't done something when we've done it. So particularly on this whole email thing, I'm constantly getting emails or things are being posted on Facebook saying, oh, Portland Open Stereos didn't do this. And I'm like, I did it. Not only did we do it, it's I can see you opened it. So maybe you can't read. <laughs> And then they're all like, oh, that email, right. Maybe you should send a message that says, are you all aware that we have a program that shows exactly when you open an email? And when you Actually, didn't? what I <laughs> that, that's, too, that's too confronting. It's, what I it's probably is send an email that says, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Leah, Leah is much, uh, much more confrontive than that, what I said. <laughs> you get this, fuck you. <laughs> You, get to you, can't, you can't do that to members you're dependent on. Uh, but today, today I actually ordered a couple of, of uh, gift baskets to one to one of our former presidents and to another member of our board. Oh, nice. And I bought two gift baskets and they were listed on you flowers for like normally they were 150 bucks and then they had a sale for 103. Uh -huh. and and then when, so it all looked like that all the way. Uh, and when I got clicked into pay, to PayPal, and then when they actually charged, they charged the full price. So they, they didn't get that discount that they had listed on their website. So I, I emailed them back and I say, you know, you had, you had this, uh, you have this discount listed on your website. Sorry, we can't uh, we can't give you any money back because it's a discounted price. I said I didn't get the discounted price. We can't do it. So I got angry and I said, "Okay, get me your supervisor, and I I'm gonna file a complaint to Better Business Bureau." And two minutes later, I got fifty percent off instead. Yep, that's right. Oh, well, there you go. That's right. Squeaky wheel. Squeaky wheel. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. Right. And I guess most people just say, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, she's out there self regulating. <laughs> I can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's what she does when I tell her to quit barking. She'll go, oh. Yeah, I put my little dog boy away. I probably have to go get her in the middle of the night. Away <laughs> where? In a crate? Yeah, in a crate. She has her, it's her lunch, it's her siesta now. Ah, oh, good. She gets to have siesta. It every. works for kindergartners, and I guess it works. It works well, for puppies too. Yeah, it does. It's a good thing. She's very cute, though, but she was here like the first half of us painting and she didn't make a beep. So she's getting better. Where is she different? I feel she's gotten a lot better. Yeah. In the time you've gotten her. Has Julia forgiven you yet or is it still touch and go there? Uh, yeah, she has. She comes and sleeps on my pillow when she knows the puppy is in her, her crate. Luca yeah. does the same thing. She's always like, the moment we finally bring him out, she's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Just staking my claim here. What did, and then she gives me a look like, what did I do, mom? Was I not in some way a good cat to you? <laughs> <laughs> Long suffering. Did I, not do a cat? Did I not do all the things that, like, <laughs> but it's also teasing Sunny. Yeah. Oh, good. That's good. when she knows that Sunny can't get to her, and she's like a little monster. Good. Very cute. Hi, 
I like that. They are really like sisters. They are teasing one another. And, but they're not angry at one another. Hmm. It is true, though. Time does, like, bring a lot. Yeah. I won't say Hermes and uh, Mooka are exactly like siblings, but they tolerate each other much better than they did a year ago. Yeah. And so she, like, is much more likely to stand up for herself, and he's... He gets like, he's like, oh, she swats at him. And he's like, oh, damn, you were serious. Okay. <laughs> okay, backing off now. Yeah, they, the little one. <laughs> Julia does that to Sunny too. It's really cute. It's nice to have animals. They ground us. Well, sorry, it's going to be a boring conversation for those that are listening online. Huh. We're all just chatting, chit chatting. Chit talk. I think I mentioned that artists were idiots as a group and you were like journalists are idiots as a group. So not idiots. You didn't say that. You said they're hard to manage. <laughs> like, I think we're just chit chatting. Yeah, you know, it is the thing with deadlines and journalists. I mean, no one can do it until after deadline. It yep. seems like. Yep. You met any lawyers? <laughs> idiots. They're all like that too, eh? They only listen to the third warning. You know, I think I'm a little like that too, though, particularly with legal documents and and stuff that's really boring that I know you have to do, but yeah, bureaucratic stuff. I'm trying to get better, but it's hard. Is that your cat, Sandra?
Mm. Let's see. Nice job, Eugene. It's a good place to leave it. This is not very convenient, you know. Good job, you guys. I like the variation that you're getting in there, Eugene. I don't know if you're using a palette knife or a um, brush or both, but it's looking good. Love it, get off. See what Rabbit is doing? Oh, he's getting off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mastering his master. <laughs> Paint here. Don't want you to step in it because it's all very dark. My rabbit is improving it, believe it or not. I mean, it's let's see it. Not, it's not great. I mean, it's I don't know whether it's salvageable, but it's getting better. Cool. I think so it needs learning. You're learning. This is all. This yeah. is what. Did you send the picture? No, I'm trying to. It always takes me a few minutes. My phone is um, Now you have it. Okay, I've got it. Oh, look at that. Where? Well, it's Wonderful. not. Wonderful. No, it's not yet. It's definitely yeah. coming along, though. And I like how you're working, Sandra, with these ideas to see what you need to do. Yeah, I would say he isn't even ruined yet. Like, I would say... No, <laughs> not, not it could be, but uh, it could go either way at this stage. Did yeah. you notice the extra word there, uh, yet? <laughs> He's yeah. not ruined yet. It could go either way. <laughs> there is potential for both. You should have seen, look at it. This is what it was just before that, right? So it's just layering colors. Yeah. I'm yeah. darkening the, the, the bits that were too light. I'm darkening them as much as I can. There you go. So that's what, so what you're learning is you can darken and that will allow you to get more consistency, right? I love how the back of the body's kind of warm. Oh, that works, isn't it, the back of the body? That's does. the bit that works well. Um, white feet. Oh. Oh, yes, I put a bit of tint between the toes. I like it. I like it. It's a good job. What's everybody got going on for the rest of the day? I suppose it's later for you guys. Work, work, work. I may work on... Um... I'm just going to relax. I'm on vacation. Oh, good for you. Good. What were you saying, Pat? Oh, uh, I don't know if I told you my neighbor, Carol, talked me into putting my art on the walls outside. Put a what? Uh, on the, a lot, putting my paintings on the lobby walls outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I may be working on that. Nice. You've got some good ones. I'm surprised at how many I actually have. You've been doing this a while. Yeah. Yeah, I have so many, it's ridiculous. I know. It takes a lot of room, doesn't it? Well, particularly for you, Diana, because it's, uh, it's canvases, yeah, so there's a wood frame as well. Yeah. You know, I have like two, I probably have in my inventory 250 paintings that are floating, 250, 300 paintings that are floating around at any one time, and I'm always making more. It's just, and I just happen to have them in places where they don't, they're in, you know, either in a gallery or they're in a hotel or they're somewhere. I don't have to look at them every day, but it's a lot, you know, yeah, wind up with a lot of inventory. <laughs> That's a lot. There's a lot of inventory. <laughs> Actually, I was not at all kind of excited about this piece when we started. The subject wasn't very interesting to me, but I think this actually turned out pretty good. I think you guys did good. Oh, we have to feed rabbit. Yeah. 
about 10 minutes left in class. So just do your last push. So there one more. I can't believe how fast he's well, yeah. I, haven't, I, I haven't had time to be on the on I crazy. It's yeah. crazy. It's to be here right now. Particularly because I think we're kind of consistently working on projects. But I love the Sundays because of that. Because there's a little bit more time. Yeah, yeah there's more time and there is everyone is working on different pieces. So it's really relaxing to follow everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's less stressful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, all my classes used to be three hours. I just generally find three hours is too long to be online. I mean, on a Sunday, I think it's okay. But I think for most people, it's just a long time, particularly because we're doing a lot of after work stuff. So if we were really on for three hours, it would be, you know, you'd be on till like nine or 10 o'clock. No, this is great. Once a week is good. Once a week is good. Exactly. Well, I like my life better now. I was hoping I was going to finish this today, but I'm not. Well, you know, it's not part of your testimony. So you're breaking up. I didn't hear what you said. Did we lose Leah? That, no, I'm here. Oh. I am here. It's so funny when I look at the screen, it looks like Sandra and Pat are looking at each other and talking to each other. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It's because the iPad um, the same direction. Whereas I'm... for me, I'm above uh, Pat. So, but but the iPad makes you look sideways because the camera is on the side. Right, right. It's so funny. I'm like, so I'm removing the uh, spotlight so you could look. Yeah, now you are above. Now, now Pat's above. Anyway, but you're not lined up like you were. But it was cute. It looked like you two were like talking to each other. <laughs> 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 like that, doing that. That's funny. Sound. That is the sound. That is Pat scraping off her canvas yet again. Oh, again? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, baby. It's okay. That's the that's the sound of learning. <laughs> I really need to uh, paint something pink because I have a lot of pink sitting here. <laughs> yeah, you should look at all your paintings and see what needs a little pink. I will often do that. In fact, I've got a painting right now that I'm working on that has a bunch of pink on it. So I'll probably just take my palette over since I've got some leftover paint and see what will fit. Totally. <laughs> when I have leftover paint, I just go and get another canvas and I, I just prime it with whatever colors I have left. Yep. So Gamblin, who makes oil products, oil paints in Portland, who does all the beautiful oil paints and is my recommended paint dealer. Every, they do like big vats of paint, right? So like yeah. vats of whatever, they make these vats and then they, 
And then whatever's left over, they throw into a bat, another wall. So they just all year long keep throwing like uh, colors into this vat. And at the end, they bottle it, and they give it away. And it's always gray because of course, like when you're mixing all that many colors, they're always a different gray and they name it, they give it a name and then they don't sell it, but they give it away to their customers who buy other paints. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, and it's different all the time. And uh, yeah, they call it Torrid Gray sometimes, or they have all, they have different names they use for it. Uh, we did a freebie of that Torrid Gray. I haven't opened it yet, but at yeah, one of our events. It's always free. It's always free. And it's and they give it to you whether you ask for it or not. They just give it to I you. Mean, if you buy Gamblin paint, the art stores are asked to give you a tube of it. Yes. They oh, so it. they put it in tubes and yeah. Yeah, they tube it and then they bottle it, but they don't sell it. They give it away to their right. kind of neat. It is neat. It is but neat. it is good. Um, you know, it's, I mean, grays are great to have. So it's always a different kind of gray. Um, we normally are a city of gray, although not this year. They're way too sunny. Oh, oh yes. Made Portland gray. This is the problem about the uh, Northwest. Yeah, we're but, losing. Uh, it, it sounded very gray like England, and I thought, oh, God. I mean, it, it sounds great in other ways, but I thought I've you been there to that. I don't. You never do it again. In truth, the, the North of Portland is fantastic from June to October, the end of October. Amazing, even into November. So you can kind of put up with the other six months of the year because those six months are kind of magical, like the best. But this year it's been hot and we had the hottest May, on, driest May on record. We had the hottest June on record. Normally those are months we get a lot of rain. We didn't get any at all barely so are you having a drought yeah oh shit. Well, we have a drought every summer though yeah but it's it usually comes in july and not yeah, in that's in, true not in june oh really right I yes think, mountains have really drought here. our water comes from the mountains and uh run off from the mountains we have a watershed that's really amazing um so the water in this state is really great and it is like there's just there's almost no snow on the mountains. I've never seen it like that. Not as early as it has been and as often. So it's interesting. It's been an interest. It's been a warmer, hotter year than we're used to. But we're used to gray. All right. You Anybody want to share anything one more time before we uh, before we end class today? I think it went pretty well, actually. I think everybody got something out of it. You may not have gotten a final painting. Like we actually, those of us working in oil would not have a final painting. But um, Pat, I'm glad you had the chance to work with mixing and to start to learn in your head how when you have to quit with something and start anew, right? Right. Same thing. If you just get that in mixing, your mixing life is going to get a lot easier. If you don't get stuck in like feeding that black hole of a original color that you know one mixes and it isn't good, if you don't get stuck continuing to put stuff in there, you're gonna be, if you can just get that, oh, gotta get out of here and move over here, you're gonna do great. Um, okay. So, I mean, you need to learn to do it fast, right? Although with oil, not as fast, because it doesn't like- Yeah, nothing dried out of me today. No, it won't. It's not going to dry for days. No. no. And it sounds like you're starting to get how to layer dark, which I really, I think is really important for what you're doing. And you have not yet, like, that rabbit is still a player. It's still a player in the commission. Yeah, that's how it looks like. I think he's coming along. But it's not too ruined yet. Where I, I think you're almost there. It's like a little bit up here on the top. If we could get this light darker. This bit, right? It's well, the the block that light bit is okay. It's the it's See, that's a photo. Hold on. Yeah. See a photo. I've got that kind of lighter bit. Yeah, it's not, it's a little bit 
there's a above the light bit, there's a kind of medium-ish bit that needs to be darkened. Uh, you mean here or there? Above, there. There? Yeah. No, there. there. No, top. The top is the black line, uh, and I, I got that. Yeah, but what I'm seeing is a little white area surrounded by gray. So it sort of pops out a bit much. So um, it, there needs to be some kind of softening, maybe okay. of the light area. Of a, yeah. The softening of a lighter bit, right? Yeah. Or darkening, really. The meeting the medium bit. That's Thank what's sort of jumping. But otherwise, it looks great, Sandra. It looks really well, great. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Uh, and Eugene, I think you did a great job with your geode today. So we I, will get back. I to wrap my mom, mom's mouth, but I'll work on it. Send it over. Do you, do you want to just hold it up? I, I sent it over. Okay. <laughs> I, I'll fix it. Okay. I think the eyes are better. I do too. Eyes are better. And the mouth is almost there. It's almost there. Absolutely. And the tilt you've got. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. All of these can be fixed. Um, all right, you guys. Great work. Really good work. Today. This is a nice session. It was a good session. I think a lot of like working stuff out happened. Very, very nice. And don't worry about final product. This is not about final product. This is about learning what paint does. Right? Some, it's a, okay. It's okay. so nice. It really turned out well, Sandra. I'm really great. All right, you guys. Well, thank you. So next up, uh, see you when I see you. Maybe Tuesday, maybe later. See you okay. soon. Bye bye. Great bye. work. Bye. Good job, everybody. Good job. Bye.